The following is an exclusive presentation of the Yes Network. Eight years ago, the Yankees Hope Week initiative was born. One week during the baseball season in which the team recognizes people or organizations making a difference in their communities. Hello everyone, I'm Nancy Newman and welcome to Hope Week Remembered 2016. This season's Hope Week featured another collection of inspirational stories as the Yankees continued to help others persevere and excel by providing difference makers a platform to have their stories heard. On day one of Hope Week, we were introduced to an exceptional young man who is bringing awareness to the struggles of military families while their loved ones are overseas. Young Jake Gallen first heard about the plight of military families while watching Oprah. From there, the then eight-year-old Jake formed Stars for Cars. His organization shines a light on the families left behind by troops overseas. Thanks to Jake and his stars, he's bonded a community together all for a great cause. We always think of the military, the people who are actually active duty or on, on the reserve or people who actually have the uniform. We think of them the most and like, if you hear like, support the troops, you're gonna think the troops, not their families that are left behind. And I wanted to make sure that those families were recognized and taken care of. Jake has always been a, um, a, a person who, who looks out for those less. I think he sees that there's something out there that people have someone who's gone away to protect us. You don't know when, if, or how they're coming back. And the kid and the parents at home are on this pins and needles this whole time they're away. And no one thinks about them. We sell um, star-shaped uh, magnetic decals. If you're driving and then you have the decal on the back and then you can see like someone else maybe driving behind you might say, oh, well, maybe we should help too. And it would kind of in essence sort of like catch fire and move around the country where people would know we have to help these people. It was more about like um, awareness. Um, we had other businesses in North Shell, Scarsdale and Bronxville start selling it uh, as well. And people would come in and you know, they say $10. Yeah, $10 sounds like a lot of money, but in reality, $10 is lunch. My teacher actually took me seriously and so did the principal. And at that point, that uh, the principal was like new. He was, I think it was his first year. And he was like, okay, let's do this. Let's give it a shot. My first initial thought when I met Jake Allen was how fortunate this community was to have a young man that at such a young age was using his heart and using his motivation to do something good for the world. It's been wonderful for me to be able to leverage what he's been able to do to inspire other kids throughout the school and to really use that as a framework for clubs that we want to create and fundraisers we want to create and it starts with a dream and it can turn into a reality. The amount of fun the kids have when they're selling stars is great. They just bounce around and we do it for three or four hours. That's all it takes at, a, at locations. And you know the effects that you get from helping people and the, the direct responses he, he's received from certain people, it, it really it does touch you and it makes you continue. And he, I think he has a really good time doing it. I think it's fun to just kind of like romp around like a certain, like they give us an area and I'm like, okay, we can go romp around and like ask them, complete strangers and most times they say yes, what better? It, yeah, it couldn't be any problem. He keeps on topping himself and it, and it gets tough. And, but no, uh, he would have to do something really bad to knock it down the level of pride that I have. Jake thought he was off to a typical day selling stars in front of the New Rochelle City Hall. But once there, he was greeted by family and friends and on this morning, he had a little bit of help from some unlikely sources. What's up? How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? So nice to meet you, man. I'm Brian. Nice to meet you, Brian. How you uh, doing, brother? How you doing? How are you? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. What's up, buddy? Brett Gardner, how are you? Nice, nice to meet you. Just, uh, they're all $10 uh, a piece, and then you just uh, say, would you like to buy one? All right. It's pretty right, easy. Perfect. OK. What gave you the idea that you started with this? Um, I was watching a television show when I was eight. Yeah. Yeah, and I just saw, I saw actually a gold star mother who um, lost her son. Right. 
and then I was just like, I got to do something. That's awesome, man. So you've been doing this for five years, since you were nine? Yeah. Five years, Dave. Hey guys, we got Jake here, okay? Sure. All right. Uh, Tip of days, yeah. though. I love it. See, Jake? Thank you. You have to hire me, man. Yes. Come on. Oh, it's volunteer. There's no money involved. But no, that's sorry. all right. I'm looking for money. Yes, yes. Hire me. I'm work. I do the work. We'd like to present the USO a check for $10,000 in, in Jake's name. Mo, Matt. Super incredible. Um, I take myself back to when I was nine years old. <laughs> Stuff like this didn't cross my mind. It just shows you the kind of human being he is, um, the kind of man he's turned into, and uh, it's incredible to be a part of it. Uh, there you go. Beautiful. Once all the stars were in place, it was off to Yankee Stadium for some fun. Since Jake brought the Yankees into his world, it was time for the team to give him a taste of life in pinstripes. Joining us now, Stars for Cars founder, Jake Gallen. Coming up, the Yankees are cleaning for a reason. Welcome back to Hope Week Remembered 2016. Debbie Sardone is a Texas native who created a cleaning service to assist those stricken by cancer as a way to help make the everyday household tasks a little easier. I own Buckets and Bows Maid Service and I took a phone call one day from a woman who was just inquiring about service. And she said, oh, I can't really afford that right now. I'm battling cancer and I'm not working and she hung up. And I realized that day I'd missed an opportunity, so I made a decision that any time a woman called my office that was battling cancer, we would just give her the cleaning for free. So then in 2006, I decided to take that company policy outside of my own backyard, and I took the idea nationwide, formed the nonprofit Cleaning for a Reason, and now we have over 1,200 other maid services giving back to women with cancer in their own communities. One woman who was about to receive a free cleaning is a Bronx resident living in an apartment with her husband and two children. My name is Maribel Ruiz. I'm 34 years old and I have colon cancer, stage four, and it's um, genetic. It runs in my family. I found out, unfortunately, um, going on a mom and daughter cruise, I was having stomach pains, thinking it was acid reflux. It came out to be cancer, colon cancer. Hi, how are, you? how are you? When Mary Bell heard a knock on her door on day two of Hope Week, she thought she would be welcoming a crew from cleaning for a reason into her home. I got some friends to know about. Hi, Hi. oh my God. How are you? <laughs> and this is my daughter, Lena Hi. Bean. Hi. Nice to meet you. How are you? I'm fine. Hi. Whoa, my God. How are you? Hi. <laughs> I think I'm shocked. I'm so shocked. Hello. Hi. Hello, how are you? I'm fine. Did you go with you? Hi, hi. So hi. good to meet you. Oh my so God. good to meet you. Well, you can tell all your friends your house was professionally cleaned by the Yankees players oh and spotless maids. I <laughs> have, believe me, yes. my daughter's in the And you're so excited. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. You so much. Joel Duvardi cleaning my house. <laughs> I'm so shocked and surprised. <laughs> I'm being strong, just like, yeah. Yes. Fighting my, you know, my sickness, and I'm doing my best. And good to meet you in person. <laughs> <laughs> After so many years, a Yankee fan, especially you. I mean, I, I am very thankful. <laughs> I really am. And, you so, and I appreciate your help a lot. Thank you. <laughs> Being able to help a little bit, but also hear from her, you know, what she's going through and uh, how positive she is and, you know, how powerful of a woman she is. Uh, you know, she's an inspiration for a lot of women that are going through difficult times. She loves it. She was like, I just saw the game on TV and I saw Hope Week yesterday on TV and here you guys show up to clean my apartment. She says, I feel like I'm in a dream. So it was a great day. Knocking at my door and having them all just walk in, that's surprising, very surprising. 
you know, I couldn't talk because just to have them coming in, it was surprising but very thankful because they were very good guys. Honestly, talk, have the conversations with them. They talked to me. It felt like I knew them, like we were friends. When we return on Hope Week Remembered, we're planting seeds for a fruitful future. Thanks for coming back with us here on Hope Week Remembered. While volunteering at an elementary school in Harlem, Tony Hillary found there was dire need to emphasize healthy eating and living for the children and families of the local neighborhoods. This is the story of Harlem Grown. Our kids are at almost 90% below poverty here. 90. Kids will come in eating Doritos and Pepsi for breakfast because they didn't like the breakfast at the school. There was a rumor going around that school vegetables make you sick. So the kids just pushed anything green to the side and would eat whatever starchy thing there was. One day, I personally didn't want to eat the school lunch at the time, so I said, let me go out and get something. And I started walking and walking and walking. And that's the day I counted 53 fried chicken restaurants in a three block radius of right here, 29 pharmacies, and not one affordable food option. Multiply that with 90% below poverty, everybody's on food stamps. How do you eat healthy? It's not as easy as it sounds. That's kind of what started Harlem Grown. There was this abandoned community garden directly across the street from the school we were serving. I just did some paperwork and we got it. We registered it as a youth garden, school garden. Okay, first thing we're gonna do is make our hole. All the planting in here is done by children. Put it in there, put the dirt back on. There you go. Harvesting and the food go home with our children and their families. Good job. If a child plants it, they will eat it. You gotta remember which one is your broccoli because it's yours and you gotta come back and eat it. And we found eight out of 10 times that they eat it, they like it. Who likes broccoli? Me! We started with the one school across the street, just that school. Now we host, oh my God, 30, 40 different schools, 30 children per class, on average three to four classes a day during the school year. This is their place, they built this, they own this. So they come every day to check on their plant. And from that is a great deal of pride. They feel that like they built this. And we take a lot for granted. I mean, I grew up in suburbia. You come here and you tell the kids, put the gloves on, they'll put them on backwards. Or could you grab the rake and they'll come with a shovel. You know, they just don't know. They've never done it before. This grass is a vital part of this because our kids have never walked barefoot in the grass before. So these are all the elements that we try to, you know, give them. Here in the middle of Harlem, go figure. Good morning, Miss Allen's class. Good morning, Mr. Tony. The Yankees, we go out and try and find inspiring people, and we kind of shine light on them. So we got a big day. It's all centered around food and the food that you guys grow here and the, the, the love and the work that Tony's put into this garden. I have a special guest over here. New York superstar chef Andrew Carmelini, who is here Woo! using all the ingredients from your garden to make a salad, a healthy salad. We want to make sure that there's salads for a long time here. And on behalf of the New York Yankees and the Steinbrenner family, we'd like to present Harlem Grown with a $10,000 check. It's events like this, people coming, and they have a living, breathing example of an alternative that they're living every day. I know this is a day of service for you, a day of hope, but here it's so much more. 
normally you would never see five to eight year olds like, eating arugula because it's just like too overwhelming for them. And they were crushing the arugula inside the salad today. Questions ready, I like you. They help you make sure that you are really healthy. It's interesting to see the, the one the little girl was like was telling me like about healthy, eat healthy food. That's, that's like beyond, beyond cool. So who here has done some farming before? Big this guy right here. Big, big, big Mike. Oh yeah? yeah. Okay, cool. Cool, 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 cool. I like it. I'm always watching the, the, the tomato tree because I know how to grow in Dominican. I found a ladybug. Oh yeah. Oh, you know the lady. <laughs> Back in DR, when we were younger, we used to do it. So I kind of enjoy doing it. So why not? You know, I have an opportunity to do it with this kids, and I really enjoy it. It's uh, been a great day, and it's pretty cool that here in New York City there's a green space and they're growing vegetables and, and fruits and kids are getting involved. Having the actual players and staff engaging my children, I'm choking up now, so please don't make me elaborate anymore because I might start crying again. You work so hard in this and you're screaming at the top of your lungs and you don't think anybody hears you. It's the people capital that makes this work. How could these kids imagine themselves anything else than what they are without any outside engagement? When we return, we'll get lost in a good book. Welcome back. Former kindergarten and first grade teacher Alvin Irby wanted to encourage young children to read for fun in the hopes of it becoming a part of their everyday lifestyle. Here is how Barbershop Books was born. So the idea really came about when I was teaching in the Bronx. I was teaching first grade at PX69 and one day after school I was getting a haircut and one of my first graders walks into the barbershop, plops down on the couch, and just kind of stares out the window, you know, just with this bored look on his face. And the whole time, all I'm thinking to myself is, he should really be practicing his reading right now because he was my student and I knew what his reading level was. And so I really wished I had a book, a children's book that I could give him, but I didn't. And I thought to myself, you know, someone should put little reading spaces for kids in barbershops so while they're waiting, you know, they have fun books to read. The barbershop is really a cultural center in many communities. For some boys, the barbers are one of the most stable male role models in their lives. And for boys who may not have a father, you know, who's in their lives, like the barber is that guy. And so for barbers to have an opportunity to encourage young boys to read, um, it really means something to be coming from barbers. I think that when children have access to great books, um, they have access to positive reading experiences very early in their life. Uh, the books themselves and the experiences they have around the books is what convinces them that there's this whole big world out there um, waiting for them to explore. And so for me, you know, just creating positive reading experiences, um, providing the barbers with tools, resources, information that they can use to help support early literacy in the barbershop is really what, you know, Barbershop Book sees as the work that we're doing. On day four of Hope Week, Yankee players, along with Bronx-born rapper Fat Joe, joined Alvin at a local Harlem barbershop. They came bearing books and jumped right into story time with the elementary school kids of Promise Academy. And when you read books, it opens up the whole world of things. You learn all kinds of things you may not even knew existed. And that helps you to be free to do whatever you want to do. Not only did we bring books, we brought something else. Alvin, on behalf of the Yankees and the Steinbrenner family and all the kids you're, you're helping out, this will hopefully help get more books and more spaces and more yes, barbershops. So. Growing up in a barbershop, you know, I'm always here with, you know, my kids and my dad and my grandfather. You know, it's, it's awesome to see that he has to give the kids the books and do something productive while they're sitting here waiting for their family members to get a haircut. I think Alvin does an amazing job of showing that reading is fun. And, you know, if you can get them started really young reading children's books, as they get older, they'll want to learn more. and They'll want to learn about the presidents or, 
you know, animals in the ocean or whatever it might be, and that's very important. I grew up not too far from here in the Bronx, and um, every chance I get to come back and talk to the kids and, and motivate them and show them that anything's possible, man, is very important. They need to know that. It's so, it's, it's so much hopelessness that we got to bring hope to them. Don't play with your food. <laughs> I think it's just cool the whole concept of coming to you know get your hair cut and while you wait your turn you actually get to participate in um, some reading activities and you know it just makes it fun and um, you know keeps the kids uh, knowing that uh, you know education is very important. The fun moved down the block to Harlem Children's Zone where over lunch, the children got to discuss their favorite books with their new friends. They received book bags filled with goodies and were told they'd be joining Alvin later on that evening at the Yankee game, where Alvin would be throwing out the first pitch. My emotions have been through the roof. That's where they've been in the sky. I mean, first the kids, amazing, laughing. We have fun with the read aloud. And then to be here on the field, with all these amazing players and just being celebrated um, for the work that I love to do so much, it's just really great. These are the type of experiences that really uh, stick with you. You know, like they'll never forget the time that they came to see the Yankees play or the time that they read that book in the barber shop. So I'm just glad that I can be a part of creating that type of, you know, memorable moment for the kids. Coming up, Yankees pitch in to give one lucky teenager a brand new bedroom. Hope Week Remembered 2016 continues now with our final story of the week. Our goal for each bedroom is to create a personal sanctuary conceived exclusively for the individual. A safe haven where the young person will feel inspired, protected, stimulated, valued, appreciated, and loved. That is the mission of Blissful Bedrooms, a group of volunteers dedicated to making over bedrooms for young individuals who have physical limitations. Blissful Bedrooms came out of my work as a physical therapist. I worked with many students for a long time and then they would graduate. And there were some students that unfortunately didn't go anywhere after that and stayed in their bedroom all the time. So I had one student, she couldn't sit up and she couldn't speak. Yet she was witty and charming and just alive. So decided to uh, paint her bedroom her favorite colors and hang butterflies and when we saw the reaction of her and her family, we were kind of blown away emotionally. So we said we wanted to do it again, but we wanted to get help. So I put an ad on Craigslist and people answered. The Yankees teamed up with the organization to help remodel the bedroom of 18-year-old Saeed Rivera. Saeed, what's up, man? Good to see you again. You doing all right? We brought some friends here for you, all right? This is Alex. Good to see you, my friend. A Bronx native who was the honoree on the final day of this year's Hope Week. <laughs> you know what the best That's part is? Guys. You know what the best part is? They are going to be painting your room. Oh my yeah. God! Hey, we're going to be <laughs> we're going to be trying to paint your room. <laughs> and whatever mess we make, we got the experts to clean it up. He wants to be a normal guy. You know, that's all he wants. What I love about Saeed, he's always asking me, how can I help you, what can I do? He wants to feel worthy, he wants to be involved, he's curious. Several members of the Yankees went from ballplayers to interior decorators, helping the crew from Blissful Bedrooms paint and redecorate Saeed's room. They built this bat rack, and this is going to go in your new bedroom. Wow! Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> So the bat rack doesn't do much good unless you have bats in it. So these guys are going to supply autograph bats. Oh uh, <laughs> we have a, a real influence and, and an opportunity to really help out and influence and inspire. And Saeed is a beautiful kid and uh, to see the smile on his face and his reaction, his mother, his grandfather, his father, it, it's priceless. Whether they were painting or sewing, the players were glad to help with such a great project. I really thought of 
you know, we was doing the room and okay, I was like, okay. And then when everything else came along, I was like, oh my God, Martha. She was like, it was a surprise. I was like, I'm really surprised. But it was, this is an experience I can never forget. Never. This is something amazing. Like, my son is truly blessed. After the day spent remodeling with the Yankees and taking in the game, the Blissful Bedroom's crew went back to work all weekend and on that Sunday revealed Saeed's brand new room. That's going to finish up this year's edition of Hope Week Remembered. We'd like to thank all of the honorees for sharing their incredible stories of courage and inspiration. For all of us at YES, I'm Nancy Newman. Thanks for joining us. Your attention, please, ladies and gentlemen. You're watching, yes, the Yankees Entertainment and Sports Network.